Hello and welcome to Pop, Pop Off, Off, Sis! The show where we talk about life, current events, and, well, ourselves. I'm your co-host, Lydia. And I'm your co-host, Margo. Welcome to this week's episode. Welcome back, guys. We've missed you. We have. What are we, week five, week six? Oh, four, gosh. What is everyone doing? I miss everyone. I miss human connection. What does touch feel like from another human being? Uh, who knows? It's a foreign concept. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, you know, quarantine is rough, but I'm hoping that our little podcast today can bring you some joy, can make you feel good. Speaking of feeling good, Lydia, do you have a rose this week? My rose is my family and I did like a family Zoom, which I'm sure a lot of people were doing lately. And we did a Zoom last week where everyone was trying to figure out the different backgrounds you can do. And, you know, that can go a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. And my brother outdid himself. We were cracking up. He figured out how to make the background a video and actually filmed himself cheersing himself, himself with a beer. So... Basically, he made, he doubled himself, and it was like, he would turn a certain way, and the Zoom background was a live video of the video he had made, like, a couple minutes before of him leaning into the video. So, basically, he duplicated himself, and it was amazing. That is so cool. I had no idea that you could record, like, put your background as a video on Zoom. Yeah, you can make it a video and you can be in it. And it just like it, it changed the Zoom background game forever. So do that if you can't figure it out. Yeah, my issue with the Zoom background is, you know, of course, when I knew it existed, I tried to do it the very first time I ever opened Zoom and I clicked that my that I already had like a green screen installed or something. Turns out that box, you can't unclick it. So now it always thinks that my face is like the green screen. <laughs> so when I Mine try too. to turn on a background, like my face becomes the background. No, same. I can't do Zoom backgrounds. It's something with Max and um, the, I think the year of the of your Mac. Or something. Oh, my computer's too old, apparently. No, mine too. I can't do them. It's so sad. Well, that sounds quite hilarious. I know that would have sparked joy for me saying <laughs> something like that. It was funny. What about you? What roses are going on in your life right now? You know, on Tuesday, I had this really nice chat with one of my professors post Zoom class. Because I feel like with all this extra time, I've been having like all these crises about, you know, what's my career going to be and what am I going to do once I graduate and all this stuff. And I had this really talk, like nice talk with my professor where she was so supportive and she just kind of started listing off all these possibilities that were out there for me that like I didn't even know existed and like... I don't know. It was just so comforting because she had just such confidence in me and in my skills. And I feel like lately I've just been really overthinking everything. And, you know, especially being in the theater industry, we don't even know what's going to be happening with that industry once quarantine is over so it was just really wonderful and she kind of just reminded me that you know there are millions of options out there of careers to pursue of things to do there are so many possibilities out there and if you have a dream and you really think that you can do it like and you work hard you can create magical things Wow, I love that. And I'm sure it was so nice to be reassured and having that reassurance from an expert at school is just awesome. And I'm so happy that you got a lot from that conversation. Thanks, Liz. You're welcome. <laughs> we're kind of we're kind of off the walls today. What else is new? <laughs> so we, of course, are trying our best to stay away from COVID conversations because that's all any of us are talking about. So we want to be that 
time away from that for as long as we can be. So we touched on this a little bit a couple weeks ago, but we want to revisit some of the things we've been doing and that have really just fed our soul these past few weeks. But first, everyone bear with me. I have to give my girl AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I need to give her a little shout out because Mm. she has been spitting bars the past few weeks on national television whether she's on msnbc or another news channel giving an interview she just tell it how it is she was speaking about how to help the working class at such a trying time and she actually was given a specific amount of time to speak and went over that time and was just so passionate so full of energy had so much conviction in what she was saying but what really got me is at the end of her speech she was addressing Republicans and her Democratic colleagues, she said, if you had urgency, you would legislate like rent was due on May 1. And I was like, preach. It was just, it wrapped everything up in a nutshell, was just so well said. And I just have to shout her out for that because I was with her. I heard her. I was, I was there with her mentality. I was just in awe of that because that was just such a good way to end everything and just wrap it up in a bow because that's what it is. They, you know, there's a lot going on in politics right now but what it comes down to is if you're here for your constituents you know act like it and show up for them so shout out to her for that I love AOC I just feel like she always speaks the truth and if you've ever seen her go after another member of congress where she's questioning a bill that's trying to be passed or, you know, just their intentions. I mean, she just cracks that whip. She gets to the bottom of it and she's like, how are you truly going to serve the people? And I just respect her so much for that. Amen. Now let's get into what we've been doing. How have you been filling the time, Margot? What are some things feeding your soul right now? Well, Lydia, you know, I've been doing a couple things to try and spark some joy during this tumultuous time. So I just want to share a few of my favorite things that I've done so far that I think that, you know, some of you listeners could do in case you already haven't done them um, that have been really fun and kind of taken me out of the quarantine mindset. So the first was, this was really fun. This was a couple nights ago. My mom and I did a little at-home sip and paint. Now a sip and paint has become one of those like millennial trendy things to do where essentially it was like you would show up to an art studio or something like that. Sometimes they're free. Sometimes it costs money. But there would be somebody instructing you how to paint a a painting. Everyone was doing the same image and you got some wine or you brought some wine with you. So you were sipping while you were painting. My mom and I did a little at home, one of those where I got out some watercolors that I have from this one class I've been taking where we have to do some watercolor and I got out, you know, our watercolor paper and we poured some nice red wine and then we just found a YouTube video. They have all these paint with me YouTube videos that are actually really um, well done and very interesting. We just watched one and I played some jazz on the speaker and I felt classy with my wine and my paint and it was a lot of fun. And it was more than just that night because we didn't finish it because with watercolor, it does take some time to dry before you can put on the next layer and it turned into like a nice two-day project and I don't know we spent at least maybe six hours painting and it was just so wonderful and relaxing so I highly recommend it you can take out the sipping element from it if you don't want to drink and you can just paint but it does add some nice creative license when you (laughs) you know are two glasses of wine deep and you're like oh Maybe I'll add some yellow into this green. (laughs) Yeah, it was great. And something else I did, well, I kind of had to do it for a class, but I've been learning how to crochet. Um, 
I feel like in so many households, there's just kind of like a ball of a cheap yarn somewhere. And you can just pick it up with a crochet hook. And you can find some hashtag yarn in YouTube. <laughs> because there's also you plenty of YouTube videos that teach you how to crochet. And then something that has really been the highlight of my past two weeks was my friends and I who are on this group chat together got together to do a zoom powerpoint party now there this has been something going around the internet but in case you don't know what a zoom powerpoint party is it's essentially everyone who can at least in the zoom comes prepared with a powerpoint it can be about the group it can be about anything you want and you you take turns presenting so mine which i think was quite a success uh was about the rules of each one of our group chat members the rules that they would have in helping us survive during the zombie apocalypse and it was quite hysterical. Somebody else did one that was pretty savage on who they thought should be coughed on. Oh, God. <laughs> During coronavirus. So it was, you know, quite uh, savage but hilarious. Somebody else did one on all the Harry Potter books ranked. Um, the top five weirdest things our group chat has ever done. And then, of course, some memes some homemade memes of the group chat so yeah that's that's what I've been kind of doing to try and stay entertained something else that I've done that I wouldn't necessarily recommend but I've been spending a lot of hours doing is um watching lots of tiktok and uh going down the youtube hole oh retweet on that what about you Lydia do you have any joyful things you've been doing I definitely feel you on the YouTube poll. I counted and I currently have 32 YouTube tabs open. 32? So, so <laughs> I'm totally with you on the YouTube poll, Margo. And actually, I just wanted to throw out there that I got an email just now from University of Maryland. Their Terrapins Connect is like a program they do to keep Terps connected obviously <laughs> and they suggested that you take 10 minutes to talk to a terp and so we're doing that right now so oh, look at that. i've been spending my time doing the classics okay my mom and i are actually also doing a little project together we're doing a 1000 piece puzzle which a lot of people have suggested to do and i would like to let the record show we did this around christmas time as well so we like puzzles, and this one is of the, it's like a nighttime picture of the Baltimore Harbor skyline. It's super pretty, and I'm excited to finish it because it's going to be really nice, but all I've done so far is the border, so it's going to be a tough one, but that's the point, is that it takes up a lot of time, which is nice because all we have is time. Honestly. And then, I think, you know? I think also there's something about puzzles where it's just so, like, relaxing and also cathartic like when you find two pieces that fit together you know you just feel like a little accomplished in your life it's like a rush when you see them click together you're like oh yeah especially when they're like really hard pieces and they're the same color you know it's just satisfying and it's really nice too because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and I can do that while we're doing the puzzle because it's kind of hard to watch tv and do a puzzle because you got to look up you know mm -hmm. So it's been nice to listen to podcasts, which is like a mindless thing to do while doing the puzzle. So it's like multitasking, but easily multitasking. And then I have gotten so bored that I actually started getting into sports like more than I was before. I'm a big football fan, so I'm in, uh, not college football, NFL. Let's get that straight. But the... NFL draft started last week and I'm actually watching it with my dad and like getting into it so that's a new thing I've never done that before I'm asking him all these questions like well do they already know who they're gonna pick like why do they have all these different how do they know because they're doing the draft 
virtually. So right. the players are at home in their houses and then their name gets called. And then all of a sudden they have the hat on of the NFL team that they got chosen to be on. But I'm like, how did they have that hat already if they didn't know what team they were Oh, going to? that's very all true. There's all these questions. Yeah. Apparently they send them like almost all the of the 32 teams and then they just have it. So I don't know. There's a lot Wait, of they questions. send them all the hats of all the teams. Not all the teams, but, like, a majority of them they have. Yeah, they, like, the different teams will send it. I don't know. So, do they know who they're going to pick them before? Well, no, because you don't know who's going to get picked before you. But I guess they must have a list, right? Like, right. these like, are the players the further, we want. Yeah, like, the teams that don't choose right away that have to wait, they have to have, like, long lists of, like, options because their pick might be taken you know, buy another team. So they have to have a backup option. You know, Lydia, I don't really follow sports, <laughs> but um, it's kind of, you know what, Mario? It's kind of like an audition. You know, you have your, your first choice for the lead. You got your callbacks. You got, you have to have your callbacks and, you know, you have to have an understudy because, you know, the lead might get sick. Mm. So it's kind of, it's the same thing, really. So that's been kind of fun. Wait, um, I I do have an interesting tidbit. <laughs> Sure. Um, so actually, this kid from my high school is participating in the draft. I'm curious to know who because they had a lot. There was some Hyattsville people and that went to Damatha and like other some Maryland people. So who he, who is he? His name is Terrell Lewis. He went oh. and played at Bama. Um, oh yeah. And so I've been. I follow him on Instagram. We were. We went to high school together. We were in the same grade, but we we never really necessarily interacted uh, much. I think I might have been in like one class with him, but I have been trying to follow his journey, and I've been checking his Instagram. This is the only reason I even knew the NFL draft was going on is because I want to be able to say, oh, I know somebody who's a football player. But it looks, I don't think he's been drafted yet. And what, is today the second day? Yeah, so today's Friday. Uh, today's Friday, April 24th. And today, tonight is the second and third round. Gotcha. And if he so, doesn't so get yeah, picked tonight, might... does that mean he's just, like, not in it? Well, no, because apparently there's seven rounds. Oh! so So he could be picked you know, in a couple of days. Maybe he'll be with the Buccaneers and he can dress oh. like, a, like a pirate next to Tom Brady. How about that? And I'm pretty sure, actually, speaking of football, that Rob Gronkowski, who was with Tom Brady on the Patriots, retired, but now he's coming out of retirement and going to the Buccaneers so they can be reunited in Tampa. Dang! Go, and Bucks! And did you know the Super No. No. The Super, the Super Bowl... <laughs> next year 2021 is in freaking tampa so i'm mad that they're already in tampa because i'm like oh they probably think they're going again but they're not they're not because the not the orioles the the oh the ravens the ravens will be there that's going in absolutely <laughs> going in the episode exactly exactly thank you see you support me exactly i do you gotta support your sisters when you pop off together <laughs> and you know i guess our alternative our our alternative would be the redskins which is just a no-no so i'll support yeah. the nats i'll support the nats for you you'll support the ravens for me perfect And good luck to your high school friend. I hope he makes it. That would be really cool. I hope he makes it, too, just so I have personal bragging rights. Right, exactly. Because he was a big deal when he was the the quarterback of our football team. He was very good. Oh, wow, the quarterback. Okay, so, yeah, a team that needs a quarterback might definitely snatch him up. Because a lot of the – what I'm also learning is that a lot of the players that get chosen in the draft aren't necessarily going to be starting. So they need their second string and third string. Right. But what I've been doing the most during this quarantine, which Margo and I here are going to just pop off about, which I'm sure many of you can relate to, are TV and movie binging. Oh, yeah. Ooh, we got we got some reviews for you, but we don't want to spoil anything. So we're going to try our best to just suggest and hype things without spoiling them. Something I've been binging with my mother, although she has been less into it in the past week, but we were binging a lot in the beginning, has been Money Heist. Now, if you 
haven't heard. It's also called La Casa de Papel because it's a Spanish show. You better habla. Oh, you know, La Casa de Papel, <laughs> which translated means paper house, right? Right. Literally would be a paper house. So money highs, you know, they always change the titles around when switching languages. But anyways, it is in Spanish. So you can feel a little cultured when you're watching it. You're reading the subtitles. Maybe you're picking up on your high school Spanish. I mean, listen, for me, they're talking too fast for me to be able to pick up on it. But I can pretend that it's helping me remember. Mm -hmm. It's spicy. You know, there's like some sexy scenes. There's some violent scenes. It's very intense. It is not for the faint of heart as there are some things to do with, you know, guns and and gunshot wounds. And and that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say because I don't want to give anything away. But the premise is it's a group of thieves that are all that all come together to try and pull off a heist at the Royal Mint of Spain where they're trying to print like billion or millions of euros. And, you know, get that good money. And I love a good heist movie. I love a good heist show. And I will say they bring the intensity and every episode ends on a cliffhanger. But not to the point where you're like, oh, my God, they're being so over the top dramatic. No, it's like the perfect amount of drama to just keep you coming back and keep you on the edge of your seat. And I just think it's been fucking great. That is awesome. I got to watch Money Heist. My dad loved it. I think my brother and my sister watched it. So I got to get into that. And it's Spanish. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm all for that. Also, I know you guys have heard this probably from everyone, even your grandma. But Tiger King. It's effing crazy. That's all I got to say. If you truly are bored and just want to laugh and maybe feel good about your own life, watch Tiger King. <laughs> It, it really will just lift your spirits in, in more ways than one. And there's been a lot of great TikToks and memes and social media has taken off and run with Tiger King and it's great. So if you're interested in that, go watch it. It's, it's, a, it's a wild ride. Carol Baskin and killed her Baskin. husband. What? They fed him to tigers. They snack it. Oh! Carol Baskin. That's just one of many funny songs that have come from tiger king but also kind of branching off of tiger king in tiger king the main person mentions uh, um actually a very tragic event that happened like 25 years ago in waco texas there was like a standoff between atf agents and this cult religious cult family with this leader david koresh it's a whole it's a real story but wait is this the kool-aid one no waco Waco. I have to say it in a southern accent. Waco. This wasn't the Kool-Aid cult one. This was the the Branch Davidians. They were like some some sort of religious. I I don't know. If, I think it's Christianity because he talks about God a lot. And, uh, oh. He, he basically feels like he's a messiah and he's like a disciple or a prophet. And so he has to have all the children of the family and do all these things. And they have. So basically he gets all these people. I'm not going to explain it, but. So basically, Waco is the name of the show, and it's a fictional depiction of the real-life event that happened in Waco, Texas. It's wild, it's intense, uh, but it's very riveting, and it, it'll it'll make you want to go and want, find out more about it. There's real-life documentaries about the actual event, but that show on, on Instagram, that show on Netflix is very interesting what? if you're into if you're into action and real life events and then i just started this but handmaid's tale <gasps> Woo! i love handmaid's tale i okay see i was fighting watching it so many people told me to watch it and i finally tried it out and now i'm hooked it's good it's so as I've, I've seen i forget what season they're on now but I've seen all the season. I will say, no, you know what? I won't say anything because you're at the beginning of it. But I love that show and the acting is great. And I feel like I should read the book. I know. Me too. Tell me this. Does it, it only gets better, right? Like it's not going to be slow. I'm going to be, I'm not going to lose interest. No, I don't think you'll lose interest. What season are you in? I'm on episode eight. 
So um, I have two more of the season. I would say season two is one of the juiciest seasons. So okay, okay, stay tuned. Okay, will do. On a lighter note, if you want to get away from some intense shows, I've been watching Dave, which is a comedy about the rapper Lil Dicky. It's on FX. It's very raunchy. Don't watch it with your parents if you're young. Um, parents, don't watch it with your children. <laughs> But it's really funny, and it's really just really modern day, and and it's about a struggling rapper and how he kind of tries to prove himself as, like, a a white Jewish boy trying to rap. Hmm. And then, uh, also on a lighter note, you got to watch Prank Yankers. It is hilarious. It's an animated puppet prank show, which I know sounds kind of like, what? But it's actually an old show. It's been around for a long time. It's just kind of a great escape, and it features a lot of celebrities of today so it's just funny and where can you find it Lydia you can find it on Comedy Central Wednesday nights at 10 30 p.m. if you'd like to get in bed early you can always go on on demand or catch some clips on YouTube you guys better be watching this Wednesday Margo, what are you watching? Well, you know, just to keep with that lighter note theme, um, I've been getting really into Brooklyn Nine-Nine lately. Um, It's really funny. It's just a very good show to chill out to. I would put it on similar humor as like Parks and Rec and The Office, you know, that kind of, I don't know, just that kind of humor. It's in that vein. I've been watching a lot of it, though, so it does... Each episode does kind of have a similar format and it can feel a little bit predictable. So it's definitely not like your show that's going to keep you hooked and and like a drama, but it's definitely a great show if you're just having trouble falling asleep at night or you just want a good laugh. You've read something depressing. You're not feeling so great. You want to pick me up. It's very funny and the characters are, you know, have funny storylines as well. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about that show. And where can you find that, Margo? Hulu. Okay, we now we have a um <clears throat> special announcement. We have a joint show that we're just gonna have to pop off on for a minute. So bear with us. Little fires everywhere. Just finished it. Woo! Wow! 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 Is all I can say. Talk about acting chops yes Mm. reese yes carrie not in that order i think they're (laughs) equal all the other actors too i just don't know their names the storyline the writing costumes everything about that show i love yes literally everything and reese to me has just pegged is the quintessential upper middle class white mother wife that role she just kills it I mean think back to big little lies Mm. um she just she is thriving I'm loving everything about her in this role but in little fires everywhere oh my god she became Elena Richardson she became her she was so believable as that character she played that her Elena her character is a complex character and Mm -hmm. she you know when does the show take place it's the 90s right it's set in the 90s literally yeah, like late 1990s. And they're living in like this white suburb and Elena is this white suburban mom and she's, you know, says some racist shit and she has some racist beliefs. And I thought that Reese Witherspoon played the role in such a believable way, which I think for a role like that is so important because if you give it to viewers as like her just being like this evil person then people are going to be like well of course she's just evil and racist and whatever but she played her to have all these complexities to her and it makes people realize that you know just your like run-of-the-mill average human beings especially in white suburban neighborhoods have all these beliefs that they don't think are necessarily wrong and they don't see anything wrong with their actions and their words and their thoughts, but they're actually, when you look at them, are they're blatantly racist, but they just 
have justified it to themselves that they're not. Did that make any sense? So much sense. I'm with you. I feel you. They literally, you felt like those were their beliefs as people. Mm. And, you know, Margot, right up there with her is her co-star, Carrie Washington, who I just think it's so amazing. Number one is that Reese Witherspoon is actually a producer of the show. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, and she picked, handpicked Carrie to play wow. Mia. Yeah. So, great pick. She said she couldn't imagine anyone else playing her, and she had her in mind right away, and boy, was that the right choice, because she killed it. I mean, I, I there were times, without really giving it away, but kind of, no, not giving it away. There were times, same thing with Reese, the same goes for Carrie. I felt like Carrie was that character, yeah. and when she was when she was mad, I was like, she's really mad. When she was mean to Reese's character, I was like, wow, like, relax. You're giving her a hard time. Like, I, you know, like, you know, when you actually feel it, when I know that's the point of acting and entertaining through film and TV. It's like if you as an audience member are feeling for the characters, that's how you know you've done a good job as an actor. And they really made me feel something. They made me feel so much. It's such a roller coaster of a show. It's really well done. It's short and sweet. What is it? Eight episodes. Um, they're all available now. They were coming out week by week. But if you just go to them now, you'll be able to binge watch. And yes, as you said, Carrie, I mean, Carrie Washington, I just think is like one of the most phenomenal actresses I've ever seen. Like the amount of vulnerability and emotion mm -hmm. she's able to convey every time. I'm just like always mind blown. Um, you know, back when she was on Scandal, I, I loved her in that. Um, yeah. But I just think that the people they picked for those roles or for these roles in this show just work so well. And even the kids did a great job. The kids did a great job. When they there's a flashback where they show the younger versions of Carrie and Reese and they killed it. I wondered when they were gonna show young Reese. I mean, I don't know if uh, Reese Witherspoon's daughter does any acting, but I don't know if you guys have ever seen a picture of Reese Witherspoon's daughter. I mean, she looks like exactly like her mom. So part of me wondered, I was like, I wonder if they'll use her daughter, but I don't think her daughter is an actress. But um, yeah. the people they did cho choose were fantastic. The shows, I mean, I have nothing about good things to say. I thought something that was interesting was my mom just read the book for her book club. Oh, nice. And in the book, Mia and Pearl are white. What? So I'm, I, I'm curious to read the book because I feel like that's just such a different story. And most of the racism and what the book was trying to point out was the racism towards baby oh so it was more about that that's a huge difference to make me and pearl black i know that's i huge. that's why i'm really interested to read the book it almost feels like the show is its own thing even though the stories are probably similar like that's just such an added layer exactly and i because i know i had read that the ending is different in the show than in the book, but oh. I didn't know that. I thought that was the only difference. Whoa. And I guess your mom hasn't seen the show yet, right? No. Okay. I'm sure she's interested to watch now. Wow. That's uh, clearly we can't say enough good things about it. Watch it. Love it. Everyone wants a season two, but apparently the book was completely covered in this first season. So there's not really a point. Unless they're just going to, you know, create a new storyline. But I think it kind of, it all kind of, I guess you, you could make another season out of it. But it, they clearly, you know, explained what needed to be explained, I guess. For sure. I feel like they ended it on, you know, in, the, in a perfect place. You don't, like, I, what I like sometimes about shows is, like, when they end, like, you don't need to be, they don't need to tie everything up in nice little ribbons and leave them on those notes. Like sometimes because, you know, if shows are meant to reflect some sort of 
reality of life, some sort of, or even if it's, you know, some fantastical world, like life keeps on going. So I like it when shows don't always, you know, you don't always finish the storyline of a character. Like sometimes you just get to a changing point within the characters and then that's where they leave it. And then it's up to audience interpretation thinking like, well, I wonder what these characters would do next. Exactly. So like Margo said, it's on Hulu. All eight episodes are out, which is kind of nice because I'm sort of jealous of people that haven't watched because they're going to get to binge it. I know. And just to give Carrie Washington one other plug, she has a film, I believe it's a play that they adapted into a, a short film on Netflix called American Sun. Margo, I don't know if you've seen this. but if I have not. not. I, I, would highly 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 recommend you watch it it's it takes place the play is in one room it's in one scene on netflix and it's it's like three characters total three or four and it's and it's crazy because it's about another character who's never even shown but it's so talk about carrie's vulnerability you would love it it's oh my gosh it's so good it's so so good you've just added something to my watch list thank you very much you're welcome and one other thing, of course, you know, it's me, it's Lydia. So if we're going to talk about shows, we got to talk about some reality TV. I mean, of course. Really quickly, if anyone else wants to watch some reality, Keeping Up with the Kardashians season 18 just started. You can watch that. Of course, what am I going to say? Real Housewives. Now, there's some tea with the Real Housewives going on because Real Housewives of Atlanta just finished their season. But at the end of every season of Every Housewives, there is a reunion show where they all sit in a room together and hash out their issues. And it's usually, even though the season had, was filmed maybe a, almost a year prior, the reunion they actually wait to film once the show has aired and finished. So by the time the show ended, quarantine was in effect and they couldn't get together to film the reunion show so they're actually doing their first ever virtual reunion oh crazy to see i'm kind of bummed out because you know it's hard to yell and scream at each other over facetime or zoom or whatever they're gonna do oh that's gonna be entertaining to watch though because you know what the lag (laughs) right (laughs) they're gonna be like what bitch you said what (laughs) And then if there's, like, uh, technical difficulties, so like, the F words, like, are really drawn out. <laughs> but then Real Housewives of New York just started a new season, so you can watch that if you're into New York. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills just started as well. And then, of course, one of my favorites, Real Housewives of Potomac, right here in Maryland, they were slated to start on May 3rd, so coming up. But because of, I guess, production scheduling and because Bravo, the network, always wants to have at least one Real Housewives season on at a time, they pushed back because I guess they're worried about filming in the future for new things and new new seasons of things because of quarantine. They pushed back the premiere date of the new Potomac season to sometime this summer. So I'm just bummed out because it was about to start and now it's not going to start till the summertime. No! A really explosive season, so, you know, the reality part of my heart is hurting a little bit. But, you know, I got New York and Beverly Hills to watch, so I can, I can, I can, I guess I can deal with it. They'll hold you over for a bit. Yeah, just for a bit. And I feel like we haven't talked about any movies, though, Mario. Have you seen any movies lately that you really liked? Huh. I haven't been watching that many movies. I watched a really phenomenal play last night, like a filmed a version of a play that's actually free on YouTube. It's the Royal Court Theatre of London's production of Cypress Avenue. And if you're into plays, this one is just phenomenal. It's free to watch on YouTube. I would highly recommend. It's about this man who suffers from PTSD and some crazy things ensue and that's all i'll say about that what about you lydia i also have not been watching that many movies but my family and i did just watch jojo rabbit which came out not too long ago and it was really good i wasn't that excited to watch it but it turned out so funny but it's also very poignant it's about um 
Nazi Germany and explores the life of this little boy who's obsessed with Hitler and like idolizes him. But you kind of see how that changes and what goes on in his life. But it's it's so touching, but also hilarious. And that's a great mixture. So I recommend that Uh, we went on. I think we used Fire Stick. The you, you have to stream it somehow because I don't think it's out on regular tv yet but if you can watch that it's a great one Mm. that's been on my to watch list too so i'll put it to the top of the list put it to the top of the list it won i think some oscars or some awards so it was really well received certainly so (laughs) certainly so so now it's time for us to pop off a little more (laughs) aggressively and it's time for some savage seconds we popping off in three, two, one. I understand these are unprecedented times and it's no one's fault, but I'm a senior graduating this spring. And as you might have guessed, our in-person graduation has been canceled. We have a virtual commencement on the original day as planned, which I understand is a great solution for now. But UMD decided that what they're going to do is have us graduate with the winter 2020 graduates, which is a load of I want my own ceremony, my own time. I don't think that's too much to ask, even if it can't be until this summer or the end of winter. Thank you, period, done. Okay, listen, when I am working out, when I am mid-run, when I am mid-plank, don't fucking talk to me. I'm sorry. I understand. You might want to have a conversation. Maybe you're trying to distract yourself from the pain, but I cannot take it. I am somebody who, when I am in the zone, I need to be able to be in the zone. And you just talking to me is distracting me and making it more painful for me to do my goddamn thing. So what I'm going to need you to do... Is zip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was That's not directed word. at my mother at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. No. Never. Y'all know what time it is. Quote of the day. Mine, of course, is about being grateful because this is a trying time and we're trying to be grateful as much as we can because there is still so, so, so much to be grateful for. Mm. I have an unknown quote. I feel like all my quotes are unknown. <laughs> Some of the the best things have been said by the most anonymous people. Oh, my quote says, "I opened two gifts this morning. They were my eyes." Wow. Now I used to wear an eye patch, so let me just say, <laughs> shout out people that don't have, you know, that are opening one eye. I feel you, so I see you, I hear you, I'm with you. But as of this moment, I have two. So thank you. Wow. My quote is by Winston Churchill, and it is, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. Love it, love it. So keep up that courage, and keep continuing on, guys. We will see you next week, be safe, be healthy, be together at home. Love you, bye! And that is our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at popoffsis.podcast and our personal account at Lydia underscore underscore Parker and at M. Truve. Be sure to check out all of our episodes at popoffsis.wixsite.com slash website. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time.